Steve, do you yep. like poutine? I do. So Ray, do I. you're a health freak. There's no way you eat poutine. Not a lot, but man, do I like it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's such a What's not so to good, like? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, a matter of fact. Oh, that's for Ray, we'll, we'll put this right here by you, right? But, oh, but yeah. it's messy. But you think that curds. doesn't end up? Actually, you should tilt it to the camera so people can see what it's oh, like it's and that it's legit. There how about we that? Go. We got that? There, there you go. go, Ray. This is how I ended up with chicken parm <laughs> nickname, trying to do that. <laughs> that's yeah, one, great. One more for the people. We good yeah. there? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. What, what could be bad? French fries, gravy, and cheese. Nothing. Right? Feels great. Come on. <laughs> <All right. laughs> That's not why we brought the commissioner of the NHL on Gary no? Bettman. Oh. Uh, Gary, I mean, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> things are going swimmingly well. I mean, it was an amazing first half. Television ratings, selfishly, we're very happy about that. They're great. The games are close. Superstar players, superstar teams, the All-Stars in Toronto, the hockey mecca. And today, the announcement which seems like a slam dunk win that the NHL going back to the Olympics. Clean living, you're living right. Well, the Olympic decision has its challenges. It affects our season competitively. It causes a break. Teams go away in one condition. Our teams come back in another, right. depending on how many yeah. teams played and how many players on a given team are on the beach and relaxing. But this was important to the players, and we understand the value it has for growing the game on a worldwide basis, and so we worked very hard to reestablish our ability to go, and it required great cooperation with the Players Association. Yeah. Marty Walsh, I'm grateful to, and the International Ice Hockey Federation and the International Olympic Committee had to do their share. What was there dissension then for everything you're saying amongst the ownership? Because really, uh, it's a win for everybody yeah. else. The risk is for the ownership, I guess. The, some owners. Not a majority, but some owners would prefer we not go. Yep. Uh, some owners are ambivalent, and some owners think it'll be fun and it'll be good for the game. It's a mixed bag, but on balance, again, recognizing the international basis of our player pool, most international of North American sports, and the players' history of representing their countries, including as teenagers, and their desire to represent their countries to play for the gold, we knew it was important to them. Let's, let's stay international for one more second, um, because I said you know, we came on the air, this could be a collector's item this All-Star Weekend, because we don't know when the next All-Star Weekend's going to no, be. We, we, it, it, the way we won't be next year. It, no, next year it won't, because we're doing a four-nation face-off right. as sort of a prelude into the, our international schedule. Right. Yeah. So think of it this way. Next year, instead of the All-Star Game, we'll have a seven-game tournament, some games in Canada, some in the United States, uh, among Finland, Sweden, Canada, and the U.S. Awesome. And that, that with a year lead up, that's about the best you should try to do. Uh, Olympics the next year, year off. World Cup, year off. Yeah. Olympics, year off. And so, and then a World Cup again. And so we'll probably... And we're talking to the Players Association about this. Do an all-star game leading into the Olympics kind of as a send-off. And we'll see how that works if we want to keep doing it. But I think that would be my preference for the first Olympic participation. We keep the all-star game and then go to okay. Europe. Uh, you've mentioned a couple of times the cooperation with Marty Walsh and yes. the Players Association. We just had Connor McDavid here talking about the revamping of this day, the skills day. And he Which he was a part of. Yeah, he didn't want to take much credit. <laughs> And so I was going to ask you, how much did he have to do with it and also the cooperation? Because it's, it's not just one side that says, hey, let's do this. T tell, t I don't generally tell tales out of school, but we knew after last year we needed to change it up, particularly since we were coming back to a more traditional hockey market. And I happened to be in Edmonton last year after the All-Star weekend, and I had a few minutes alone with Connor and we were talking about a variety of things. I like to do that with the players off the record, what's on your mind. I said, listen, we know we need to revamp the skills competition. Why don't you help us in terms of making it something the players would want to do that you and Austin Matthews and the other stars of the game would want to do? And that became a dialogue that he continued and the Players Association continued, especially with Steve Mayer, who you know runs that aspect yes. of our events. And it led to this point. Again, this was another collaboration with the players. The Thrashers were 
we put them where they are today in Winnipeg. Out of business. <laughs> yes. We, we <laughs> so so you you, you, we you left done. an indelible impression. <laughs> did, did we ever? There's been some. And we're cap. happy to be in Winnipeg. Yeah, and they're having a fabulous year. Yes. A um, little bit of chatter popping up here and there about expansion, about movement. Uh, is it exciting? Look is it something you're always expression. The, the, the ch Because the chatter about movement, I don't like to hear because. We're not focused on moving anybody, okay? Our goal is, and Alex Morello, the owner of uh, the Coyotes' goal, is to get a new building in Arizona. And that's something he's assuring me is on track. Okay, so I know there's speculation. Put that to the side. We are getting a ton of expressions of interest. Atlanta, Houston, Quebec City, Salt Lake City, right. Cincinnati, Kansas City. Uh, I even got a long email from Omaha, Nebraska. The fact is, we're not going into an expansion mode that I can see where we say, okay, you want a team, file an application by this date. But Utah, to Ryan Smith's credit, and the governor giving him an assist, have been very aggressive in telling us they would like us to consider granting them an expansion team. It's something we haven't figured out what to do with. It's a very exciting market and opportunity. Yeah. The Winter Olympics are rumored to be going there in 34. Uh, it is a winter sport place. Uh, we did spend some time there during the Olympics in Salt Lake City. And so we're flattered at all of the interest. Yeah. And I think on some basis, it's clear that a place like Salt Lake City would, would be a, a very good place for NHL hockey. But most importantly, the level of interest that we're getting from places that want to own a team is really yeah. interesting and exciting. You left out Hartford again, I noticed. Uh, I, I Former Hartford Whaler. Yes, yes. Actually, at one point I did get a call from the governor. I'm sure. So I'm sure you did. Uh, we got to hit you with this off yeah. the ice. 2018 Team Canada World Junior Team. I'm curious from a league perspective now, the legal oh. issues, the five players from NHL clubs that are facing sexual assault charges. What's the league stance right now where we, we are with that? We began our own in independent investigation, which we said we would do. Uh, we were alone in that task, even though Hockey Canada and the London authorities were doing their own investigations. Then for the second time, because this is now six years old, it took place allegedly yeah. uh, before these players actually started playing in the NHL. Uh, but we have a responsibility to the game to make sure that we're enforcing the appropriate levels of conduct. And we didn't get any heads up. Um, and it's not official, uh, other than media sources, uh, that they'll be indicted. But there's a media veil by the London authorities on Monday. Yeah. The assumption is they'll get indicted. And then once there's a legal judicial process going on, we need to step back and not interfere with that. And so we'll wait and see. And it, when that process finishes, will respond with the Players Association in the way we think is most appropriate at the time. It, it's, a, you know, the allegations are terrible, they're horrific, they're unacceptable, uh, and, you know, it's unfortunate that we've had to deal with it. It was dropped in our laps, but we will, as appropriate, when appropriate. You had uh, quite an eventful press conference today, a lot of issues on the table, lots of discussion. A lot of questions. A lot of but, questions, but, but everyone seems to be very pleased with what's taken place so far in Toronto. This All-Star Weekend expanding to a three-day, day, three days worth of events. Well, we had a great night last night, the bringing back the fantasy draft yes. with celebrities uh, honoring the 67 Leafs, and then the PWHL All-Star yes. Game was great. And we are thrilled to be working with the PWHL and to give women's professional hockey to share our platform yeah. with them. So it's all good. No, no, the, the media veil was great. A lot of questions, but, but our world... The hockey world is really, particularly at the NHL level, in yep. very good shape. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you good for the to time, see as you. Thank you, sir. Gary Bettman, the commissioner of the National Hockey League, kind enough to grace us, as always, during this All-Star Weekend.